these external things have nothing to do with your vibrational alignment. You have everything to do with that. Your energetic focus has everything to do with that. You could work at Burger King every day and go in there with gratitude that you have a job and that you're making your way in the world and that it's just going to get better and better. You're eager, you're optimistic, you're excited for the future of all the good opportunities that are coming. That is the best way to leave that space. If you're if you're going into a place and you hate that you work at Burger King and you're embarrassed and you just are negative about it, then basically you're either going to stay stuck there or they're going to you're going to find a way that they just get rid of you altogether and you have no job, but that energy does not really serve you. So the the swiftest way to leave a situation you're in because I sense some of you watching are you're in a situation you don't really love is to start sending love to it. Maybe you're in a relationship and it's not showing you honor. Hold a space of love for yourself and a space of love for that person for teaching you what you really deserve and move out of there with grace and ease and move out of there with love. Instead of, I hate this person, we have to cause you know each other suffering and pain and call each other names and hatred because we're too afraid to just acknowledge that it's time to release this energy from my life. So these are examples of how people can get very attached and stuck energetically and it doesn't serve you. It keeps you in a lower vibration. So if you're a single mom and today you're struggling, you're, you don't know where the next paycheck's coming from and you're just, you're kind of overwhelmed and anxiety, uh, anxious. The best way to use your energy right now is not to go run in fear and just try to get a lot of jobs. It's to go and get quiet and tune into your inner soul's direction of where is the highest place for me and my children? Where is it that I will thrive? I am open. I am receptive to all the abundance, to all the good that I know I deserve. And then start watching when people do a favor for you. They help you out. Give honor and give gratitude for that. And that is going to lift you right out of that situation into a higher vibrational experience. So you being a participant in that is how fast you'll move higher. It's not about is the universe think you're worthy. You are worthy. Every one of you listening today is absolutely worthy of every dream you have. What's going to bring it into alignment is you finding alignment, you choosing to be in a vibrational alignment of receiving your dream is the swiftest way to manifesting it. You choosing to think you're not worthy of that or that at some level it's impossible is you keeping it at bay. You're keeping it over there because at some level you don't feel you're really worthy. So you're not really letting it come in. I'll give you examples of like, I remember I was, um, I was on my own, left my marriage of 20 20 years and I'm renting a little room by the college. And I was just, it was kind of funny. You have to have a sense of humor. It helps in life. And I remember one day I'm just renting this room and I'm living like with all these like free spirit hippie people. And I'm just sitting there and I'm just like, wow, it's like my life. Like I'm 19 years old again and I'm just creating and starting fresh. And it, it was exactly like that. Now I could have been in a very degrading place and been like, Oh God, I suck. I failed. I didn't make that thing work. And, you know, what's everyone going to think of me? And I would have suffered and I would have probably ended up going back to that relationship or just manifesting another one because vibrationally I would have been focused on self degrading. Oh, I'm not worthy energy. But what happened is I left what I knew I didn't want and I left it with love. I would have interactions with my ex and if he was hateful, I would still stand my ground, but I would not participate. I would just not tolerate things, but hold a space of love. And as I just moved on out of there and I'm in that room, I just realized this is like my cocoon phase. I was the caterpillar. I'm moving into the cocoon. I'm losing all sense of identity. And the more gentle I am with myself, the more I love myself and I'm grateful and I'm appreciative of everything I have. And I keep dreaming and I keep believing beautiful things are coming to me. This is where I quickly manifested my relationship with Ron who called in. I remember the day I was going, um, I left actually dating a guy and it didn't go so well. And he reminded me a lot of my ex-husband and I was just like, I am done with this. I'm done with these relationships and I am ready. Angels. I'm ready for the one. I'm ready for the one who sees me, who loves me, who supports me for who I am. And I was out loud saying this in my car. Like I talked to my angels, like my best friends and I'm just, I'm expressing it. And so that night I go to this gallery to teach a law of attraction workshop and he's there and we had known each other for years as acquaintances, 
but he's there and he's just watching my my workshop interacting with it and afterwards he asked me to dinner and the rest is history we just we were together ever since then and it was very swift very quick from my calling it forth to it arriving now that can happen and sometimes it can be like amnon's his tank where it takes a couple years but what the point is is that vibrationally i knew what i was done with and i knew what i was calling in and so i was watching for it and i was open to it and i was ready for it and like with this house we live in with the healing room and where i'm filming the show this all came to me i was teaching yoga in nature one day and i went home and was journaling and just like angels i would love to have a house with a healing room with a yoga studio i would love to lead workshops all of this stuff in my own sacred space and i would love to live in a place where i have views of nature we have gorgeous views of nature everything i asked for is in this house and this house i ended up walking in two days after writing that in my journal with a friend to pick up her laundry here and it was an empty house so my point is that when you are in the trusting the universe is supporting me energy it's not always logical. I didn't go get a, a rental magazine and start calling realtors and try to figure out how I'm going to go build this house. I could have done it that way, but I just said, universe, this is what I want. And I trust that you know exactly the best location and you're going to work it out for me. Take care of the details. So I just put in my order and then I let the universe take care of the, the big picture details. And two days later, I'm standing in this house. Now, the point I want to make with this is as I was standing in this house and it's empty, I'm walking around the house and I'm just like, oh, my God, what's up with this house? And my friend was like, oh, they're rent they're trying to rent it. It's been sitting empty. And I just immediately started walking around the house and claiming this house. I was like, this is my house. Angels, thank you for taking care of the details. Like, this is it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm just walking around just calling in the gratitude. I remember seeing carpet and linoleum in the, the dining area where I wanted to have a yoga studio. And I was like, that'll be wood floors. And I was just like very confidently calling it forth and claiming it. And what I have done in the past when I wasn't in a place of self-worth is I remember once leaving my relationship and just the dream that I could live on my own. And I remember going and looking at houses and being like, oh, but I can't afford it. And I, this is so expensive and I don't know if I could have it. So energetically, none of it came towards me. And that's the point I want to make for each of you watching is that if you're putting out this energy and intention, and then when it shows up, you say, oh, it's too expensive. It's too much. I can't afford it. I don't know. I'm not worthy. You're sending it back into orbit, into the universe. But if it comes in and some people will say you're cocky or who does she think she is? I know who I am. I'm a powerful freaking creator. And the more you guys realize that you are powerful creators and creatresses, oh. the more you are not going to walk in and kind of wish and hope. You're going to call it in. And when it comes, you're going to claim it and say, yep, that's for me. Ron said that with me when he met me. He just was like, I was like, why did you know? Because he asked me to marry him nine days into us dating, which is pretty fast. And I was, it blew my mind that I said yes, because I was pretty sure I'd never get married again. And I was like, how did you know that you wanted to marry me that quick? And he was just like, I just knew like how you are and how amazing that, oh my God, like this is what I want and I am not letting this get away. And so he could have had doubt and a little bit of maybe I'm not worthy going on unconsciously, but in his conscious awareness, he was like, I'm going to say yes to this and we'll just figure it out and we'll heal that unconscious part. So it's kind of like me seeing this house and saying, I'm going to have that house. I'm going to claim it. And we're going to figure out how to pay the mortgage and all that eventually. Like, I don't need to get caught up in those details right now. I'm just going to energetically, vibrationally claim this. And so I want you to get that part that a lot of you get things coming in close. And it's like you get the fish on the hook and you're pulling it in. And then you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm worthy of the fish. I don't know. And then you let the fish go. And then instead of realizing you let the fish go, you go into inner dialogue and say how much you suck. And, oh, I knew I wasn't worthy. I knew I wasn't enough. And this is what we have to shift. If you really want to become a powerful creator, it doesn't matter what you're creating. There's no rules. There are infinite possibilities. It doesn't matter if it's health-related, um, career-related, relationships, money. All of it is a, it's all operating under the same laws of the universe with the laws of attraction. So, what you're putting out, you're vibrationally drawing in all the time. 
So that's what I want you to really get is where you're maybe glitching yourself, where you might be sabotaging or tripping yourselves energetically and to claim ownership and realize no one is out to get you. Nobody is your enemy. You are probably your own worst enemy. And if you can start being more aware of your own dialogues, more aware of your own inner woundedness so that you can heal that and open yourself to receive, I promise you miracles will come in. I witness miracles daily now. It is my normal where there was a time where I wished and prayed for a miracle of any kind. And I probably wasn't noticing lots of them because I was focused on what I didn't have. And now I'm constantly focused on what's uh, what I love, what's beautiful, what's working out, what I adore. And I witness and co-create miracles daily. So I just want to help all of you really understand that. So I'm going to pause. And is there any other feedback or anything? Um, yeah. And oh, we're having okay. a bunch of electric problems oh, here. So. Are you getting a lightning storm? Uh, I don't hear or see it, but the power keeps going up and down on one. Uh, don't worry about it now. But okay. somebody here is, that you know says, what should one do to prepare for an angel reading or soul coaching session? What should you do to prepare? Yeah. Um, okay, that's a good question. Because um, a lot of times when I talk to people that don't know what I do at all they're like nah, I don't even know what you're talking about but some part of me feels like I should come work with you the first thing that I encourage them to do is to just meditate a little bit before we meet and even if they don't know what I mean by meditate just get quiet with yourself go in nature go in your room shut the door get your journal out and just kind of tune in to what is it that I'm ready to clear from my life what is it that I know is not working out and I'm ready to release it and then what is it that I'm consciously or unconsciously ready to call in? And so sometimes if they're unconscious about it, I can help tune in and help them get that. But, and even especially if it's the stuff they're wanting to clear, sometimes we're not conscious of all of it because we are so amazing at tucking things down and not dealing with them that we totally can lose track of how much we've really suppressed. So I encourage them to do that. But even if they've not done that work and they come see me, the most important thing is that they come open, that they come with an open mind, an open heart, and an openness to receive. If they are totally just like, oh, this isn't going to work. I don't believe in any of this. They're just a naysayer. I could, I, I could send the energy and I can still assist them and they will experience some kind of an, a vibrational shift. But if they're blocking the flow of that good and they wish to cling to that land of suffering, it won't really get through in the way that it would if they came in really open and receptive. It's kind of like you're giving advice to a friend that you love and you want them to hear that advice. And the more open they are to hearing and to shifting because they know something needs to change, it's going to help them more than if you're giving that advice to someone who absolutely does not want to heal. They actually like their suffering. They're getting something from being a victim. That's an example. So getting to kind of tune into what's going on in them and then helping them to realize what do I want to embody? What do I want to call forth and embody and to kind of get a sense of what that is. And then they just come and if they're in person, they come lay on my healing table I and I just kind of guide them into a meditation. They connect with their breath and the angels kind of, a lot of clients say they feel like they're being put under anesthesia. It's like they go down and their bodies are in, a, in the third dimensional space, but we're working in the sixth dimensional space with healing. So everything's very vibrational. So a lot of times I'll encourage them to drink water before to hydrate. And then I'll give them water right after because we burn off a lot of water in that space. Um, so that's the main things I would encourage a client. If it's a remote client, same thing. I'll encourage them to hydrate, to tune into their intention, and then just to lay down and relax, to open, to receive. Oh, yeah, and so whether they're in person or, or remote, I can assist them because we're all connected on this big grid, energetic grid. And so I've had clients in New Jersey. I've had clients in um, Texas, in Arizona, in Canada. I've had clients all over the place and that have had amazing shifts during a, a session, healing arthritis in a session. No joke. And... I've had clients like dissolve tumors in a session, clients that have been so out of balance emotionally that at the end of our session, two to three hours later, 
they are laughing and they're like, oh my God, I'm so excited for my life. Like everything's going to be different now. There's a shift of their perspective. So the more open you come, whether you're in my healing room or you're in your bedroom receiving and it's 